I've just received a kit through that I bought on eBay, and it's a kit for a digital clock, just a small one, and comes with all the components of the circuit board, and it cost £1.79, and it came from, oh, blood God, Fine ST, Finest Hair. <laughs> Maybe I should have actually looked at that beforehand. Finest Hair. So, yep, yeah, this is probably one of these companies that sells all sort of wigs and stuff like that, and random electronic components. So, um, it arrived today, and first impressions are a loose microcontroller in a polythene bag next to a bit of polystyrene. I wouldn't pack stuff like that. Anything like a microcontroller has to really be packed in either anti-static foam or at the very worst done Maplin style. I think it was Maplin used to do it. They used to wrap uh, a bit of tin foil round uh, the polystyrene and then stuff the chip through it so it basically shunted all the leads together. So. This is a, a Ziploc bag, but they've sealed it. They've used this sort of heat sealer. So let's open this up and tip the contents out, inducing an absolutely catastrophic electrostatic charge in the process, probably. Ah, uh, right. So what do we have? Polystyrene. There's a display. Oh, it's quite a nice looking display. With its protective film in the front. Uh, all these displays seem to come with what looks like a protective film in the front, and it probably is for protection, but I get the feeling that this may be applied during manufacture before they actually fill this with resin. I'm not 100% sure. And it may actually seal the front to stop the resin seeping out. But, uh, yes. Interesting. So let's, uh, let's build this. I get the feeling, from the look of it, that this is someone's DIY project on the internet that China has just jumped on and uh, mass-produced. Oh, oh, uh, it, it's strongly Chinese-ish. Right, OK, let's just start battering and sticking components in where they would logically go. So I'm going to start with the sill. Now, the sill, uh, single inline resistor array, uh, has a dot at one end, and if you look at the uh, legend on the circuit board, it's got the marker at one end, so that goes in there with the dot at that end. Now let's see how well this solders. Quite small solder pads. So with sills, I like to just solder one pad first. Make sure that it's actually sitting flush with the circuit board. Yep, that looks pretty good. And that I've got the dot on the right end. Yep. Always worth double checking. And then I'll solder the other end, and then work my way along. There's a few um, tracks passing in between the pins, which, uh, yeah, it's fine. It's not uh, following my own preferred chunky tracks technology, but that's okay. It's not so bad when you've got an actual manufactured circuit board and you're not trying to hand edge prototypes. So next I shall put in, uh, it shows two resistors which uh, are both 10K. Let's double check these are 10K. Just in case. It's those horrible blue resistors that you just can't read anything on them. So that is at resistance. I really should just remove the end caps off these leads to reveal the whole thing. Yeah, they're 10k, that's fine. I get the feeling that the circuit board was designed for the 8th watt resistors and not the quarter watt, but we'll see how they fit in. I may have to bend the leads quite close to the components or stand them up, so let's uh, pop one in there. Oh, quite small holes as well, I have to say. But they're fine. Yeah, that's a pretty tight fit. I like to leave um, the resistors a, a little bit proud either side, the lead, so it doesn't stress the body of the resistor. So let's put those resistors in. Do you think this clock will work? It would be really annoying if I built this and then found the microcontroller had been fried during shipment. Even if it does work, when you ship microcontrollers and other static-sensitive chips, 
um, in non-antistatic packaging, it can perforate the, the films inside the actual layers and it causes a little internal crater that can lead to problems later on. So I do uh, tend to encourage uh, proper anti-static uh, packaging and handling. Crop those leads. I'm using lead-based solder because it's just the best thing for the job, really. Uh, what are we going to stick in next? Something small. I've got uh, three small capacitors. Two at, th uh, two at 30 pico. And now there's a component 12M here. I'm guessing that's the, the crystal. And the 30 pico are the little capacitors either side of that crystal to... Um, uh, what's, the, what's the task of those little um, capacitors? Um, I think they just stabilise. I've never really, I've never really thought about that. Um, I always just used capacitors, the ones recommended by the manufacturer with the crystals. I think they make it more stable. So there are two capacitors that are identical sized. So I'm guessing those are the ones because the other one uh, looks like a decoupling capacitor, 100 nano. Just going to solder one lead of each initially and then make sure they're standing properly in the circuit board. Yeah, they look pretty good. These little um, ceramic capacitors, the discs capacitors, they tend to, when you heat them up, they take a glossy appearance while they're hot. I'm guessing they're impregnated with wax to make them uh, resilient to moisture. I suppose that makes sense because otherwise ceramic would be prone to water uh, absorption. I might as well stick the other capacitor in. CO C four one oh four. It's a fairly straightforward kit to put together. It is quite small um pads though. No great deal. It's cheap enough that if you messed it up it's still good soldering practice. I have to say when I was a kid I Spent what seemed like a fortune at the time on a small kit from an electronics magazine and I completely fried it. It was almost certainly one of the transistors because the soldering I was using was all cruddy and uh, I was just so new to soldering at that time that it was I almost certainly knackered the um, transistors because it didn't work. All it was supposed to do was flash a lamp on and off but uh, it didn't. So the crystal uh, is not polarised, so let's see, does this say, yes it says 12 megahertz. 12,000 kilohertz, I'll just sit that down and solder it. Soldering kits is quite therapeutic. So this is the crystal that the microcontroller will be running um, on. This will set the frequency it processes at, and that will also determine the time base inside for the um, for the timekeeping. So now uh, comes Q1, which is an 8550. I'm not sure. It just says 8550. Okay, let's stick it in and hope it is the right thing. I think this uh, drives the piezoelectric sounder, so I guess it's got an alarm in it. I'm not sure that's a good thing or not. So I'm going to solder the middle lead of the transistor and then just check it square before I solder the other ones. Lots of flux vapour coming out the sides and leaving skid marks on the circuit board, as happens. Yeah, that's pretty good. So let's uh, solder the other two. Looks good. Next tallest components, uh, the switches. I might pop the switches in. No, actually, you know what? I'll stick the uh, IC holder in. So it's got a notch marked at one end. And uh, the pins look OK. So let's see if this drops nicely into place. It's been slightly squished in transit. That's it going in. And with the IC sockets, I like to solder one 
pin at each cor at the diagonally opposite corners, and then just check it is sat down properly onto the board. It's really annoying when you solder all the pins and then you find it was sitting up at an angle. So it's looking flush, it's looking very neat, so let's uh, solder the remaining joints. Just work my way down. Heating both the pad and the pin and then applying the solder so that it flows onto the hot pad and pin. You don't carry, in this instance, you, you don't carry solder to it. Uh, you shouldn't really carry solder at all. The, the best way to create solder joints is either to apply the solder to the hot surfaces or pre-tin things like wires and then reheat them so that they flow the solder that's already on them flows together. If you try carrying solder um, over across onto a joint, then the flux will evaporate before you get there and you'll end up with a dry joint because there's not the flux to actually make it flow properly into the joint. If you haven't really soldered before, then you should get yourself a random kit and start soldering because really, this is all there is to it. It's, one, it's not something that, you know, is you don't need lessons in how to solder as such. It's something that's just straightforward to pick up yourself. And the only way to properly learn soldering is to solder. So I've got these little buttons. Quite tempted to replace them with uh, some of the buttons I use in my RGB controller kits. But I'll use these ones because they came with the kit and this is a kind of a test of the kit. The buttons I use are similar buttons, similar form, form factor, but uh, a much taller button. And these have been slightly squished in shipping. The pins are bent in these in such a way that when they go in, they actually click into the holes and they hold themselves in place for soldering, which is quite handy. And the way I tend to do these, I tend to solder a diagonal pin in each again. Double check that they're sitting flush. Yep, that's good. And then solder other pins. I don't really see a voltage regulator circuit in this. Or is that? No, I don't think. No, it's not. That transistor is that is just a transistor for the piezoelectric sound or the, or the little beep or whatever it is. I don't think it is piezoelectric. I think it's just a buzzer. It's got a long pin and a short pin. And it's got the wee tab that says positive. So I guess I'd better put that in the positive hole. So it must be an active buzzer, it must just uh, have its own circuitry in it to drive it. And while I'm in the vicinity of that, I shall put this terminal in as well. I'm guessing that this must be 5 volts. This circuit operates at... Um, oh, it is, it says 5 volts. It would have been nicer if they'd just put a little voltage regulator on board. I'm guessing that the display is probably being multiplexed directly from the uh, microcontroller pins with just that little row of resistors. Yes, it is going by the schematic here. It is just... Um, I think it is. Yes, it is. Hmm... Okay. Where was I? I was doing that terminal there. And apart from the display, the last component to go on, the chip still to get inserted of course, is this little electrolytic capacitor which has to go around the right way. So it's a 10 microfarad capacitor. And I'm guessing it's just part of the power supply. Yes, it is. Or is it part... Oh, actually, you know what? It's the reset uh, capacitor. To ensure that the chip gets a good proper reset at power-up.
the solder pads are so small that even with my smallest solder here, it's quite easy to put a sort of bigger blob than desired on. Now comes the display, which um, I'm guessing goes with the... Well, it's got this dot at the bottom, so I'm guessing that's where I'll, I'll put it up this way. I like the display, it's quite chunky, it's bigger than I was expecting. Oh, I think it's also had its uh, pins slightly realigned in shipping. There we go. So once again I'll solder two diagonal pins and then I'll just make sure it's sitting down properly. It's got four little feet that sit down onto the circuit board, so they're, they're sitting nicely. And technically speaking, once I've cropped these leads, I plug in the chip, power it up, and then discover how to program it. There's only two buttons, so that's going to be used to set the time and the alarm modes, which uh, should be interesting. Maybe this is just a timer. I think it's a clock. It might just be a countdown timer. I haven't a clue. You just never know what you're getting from China. Okay, let's pop the chip in, let's pull the tab off this uh, buzzer, let's pull the film off the front of the display. Oh god, i got stickers all over me now. So it's nice and matte. There we go. Uh, so the chip goes in, I may have to align the chip's pins. I do have a tool for that, um, I'm not sure what it is though. Yeah, I'm not sure where that tool is, the chip aligner. It basically just squishes against the pins to make them mash them all into line. So uh, I'm just going to have to hope that these go into the socket okay and don't splay out or fold underneath as sometimes happens. Another advantage of the anti-static foam is it does tend to grip the components quite well. This is not pretty. This is where I think a lot of people would fall down probably. There we go. Right, two bits of wire. I had a feeling I'd need a couple of bits of wire, so I prepared a couple earlier. Uh, this one is going... Oh, it's marked underneath positive and negative. Don't want to connect it at the back to front, that would just be a bit of a disaster. Oh, it's these horrible terminals, and they've actually pre screwed them down, which means that you can't actually get anything into them. I only use the rising clamp terminals in my own projects purely because they're just so much better than these wee things. So I'll get the power supply plugged in. And it's set for 4 volts, so I'll just uh, bring that down shortly and connect it up and we'll see what happens. I uh, see I've left a wee bit of the film in the display, I'll just uh, get that off as well. Okay, let's uh, find out what this thing actually is, what it does and... Uh, there's no instructions at all on how to use it, so let's uh, just... Uh, push buttons. So I'm going to set the current limit in this, just uh, in case of horrible things, to about uh, 150 milliamps. And I'm setting the voltage up to 5. 
Let's see what happens. Will it emit smoke? It says 12.59. And the colon is flashing in the middle. Can you see that? Oh, it's a multiplexed uh, rate. It's, it's not flickering to the human eye, but... Uh, so, oh... All right, well, that's a countdown timer. Is that what this is? I have no clue what this is for. What the heck? I really haven't a clue what this thing is. Oh, blimey. <laughs> I've not a clue what this is. Oh, it says A. Because I pressed both buttons at once. B? C? Oh, no, look, it's got loads of options. It's going through A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All right, okay, you know, I haven't a clue what this is. So I'm going to have to play with it and see if I can find information about it on the internet. I uh, shall be back shortly. Well, that took a bit of detective work. I found videos on YouTube showing it, and a lot of them seemed to be by the Chinese people selling these kits, and it showed them building it up and then pressing random buttons and not having a clue what was going on. Finally, I found a video that did um, actually indicate what they were. So here's what it is. There are two switches. It is a clock with an alarm function. And um, so the switch on the left, switch one, is used for setting the mode. Uh, and the switch on the right, switch two, is used for adjustments. And if you press the switch two on the right, it toggles between displaying hours and minutes to minutes and seconds, uh, and it just toggles backwards and forwards, that's our minute, minute seconds, that's what I thought was the timer, and if you press and hold that button, it goes into um, seconds reset mode, which basically means it's saying 50 minutes and zero seconds, and as soon as you get to 50, 50 minutes, it resets the seconds back to zero, it's just for basically resynchronizing things, uh, fine adjustments. So. The settings, if you press and hold switch one, it says A, and that's the time, uh, the hour setting for the time, and you can change that, so you just basically say I'll set it for 6 a.m. Uh, then you press it, the uh, switch one again, and it goes to B, it says 8, but that's a B, uh, and that's the minutes, so you can adjust those, that is really annoying, I should have left the sticker over that beaver. When you press the switch one again it goes to C and the on off indicates you can toggle off and on and it says chime. I'm guessing that must be an hourly chime, I'm not 100% sure, maybe it just beeps in the hour. When you press switch one again it's uh, alarm one and you can determine if, uh, this, this is a D, uh, if alarm one's going to be on or off. So I'll turn it off. Uh, then you can set the... Oh, it's just actually jumped. That's quite good. I didn't know it did that. It's just jumped to alarm two. So I'll leave alarm two on. If, it, if I hadn't uh, switched uh, alarm one off, it would have then gone uh, hours. The H is just the, the setting H. It doesn't actually mean hours. So in this case, I'd say set it for 15 hour, um, say three, three in the afternoon, and then the minutes for that alarm, which is I, and it's the last setting. So, um, yeah, it's neat enough. It's novel. It was quite an enjoyable little kit to put together. Not sure how accurate it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be that accurate because I think all the timing is generated in software. But having said that, uh, you never know until it's been running for a while because ultimately it is controlled by this crystal. But yes, it's, a, it's an interesting little kit. 
Um, I'm quite keen to see what this chime function is, but uh, I guess uh, I can always set the time to maybe 6.59 and then uh, see what happens, I guess. Um, in fact, I'll do that right now and I'll be back shortly. Okay, I've set it. The, I've set the chime on, and uh, I've set the time, so it should do something now, maybe. No, I haven't a clue what chime does. I really haven't a clue. Okay, I wondered if it maybe turns off at night, and maybe it'll chime at midday. So this is coming on twelve o'clock. Okay. So it does beep um, three times at 12 o'clock. I, I really haven't a clue. Uh, hmm, interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting, quite annoying. The beeper is just so incredibly annoying. I was hoping that maybe there'd be a mode to actually turn that off. In fact, I'm going to turn the chime off. Is that going to do it? No, it's just going to beep shrilly with absolutely every function. Yes, okay, well that was quite interesting, but it's really quite annoying. However, quite a fun kit to build anyway. One little extra note about this project. If you noticed when I was building it that I, I looked at the, how the sill was wired, and it's an eight resistor sill, so it's got nine pins, one common pin, and then the eight pins for the resistors. And did you notice when I was actually looking at the schematic, I, I made a sort of, oh, Noise. Normally with multiplexed LEDs you'd have a resistor either on the row or the uh, column uh, if you're driving them from the microcontroller, but this is really odd because what they're doing here is they've got the resistor combed up to 5 volts and then feeding all the segment uh, in inputs to the display. And if the segment's supposed to be lit, the pin on the microcontroller that is effectively connected directly to the sill it pulls down and it shunts the resistor, so the current flowing from 5 volts, instead of going through the resistor and then display, actually goes straight through the microcontroller instead. So it turns segments off by shorting them out, uh, and then it scans the digits on the other pins. That's, that's just quite odd. I mean, it's not significant. I uh, only saw 4 or 5 milliamps difference between 1111, which is the uh, was the highest current I could get in it, uh, and um, the... I tried various other combinations of digits to try and get the the most segments lit, and it's not that much difference. It's just a very odd way of doing it. I suppose it saves having lots of separate resistors. It lets them, although it's slightly less efficient, there's only a few milliamps in it, and it keeps the component count down. Um, and that, uh, more or less, I think that's more or less the only things that really of note. I, I get the feeling it's designed for operation from a USB power supply from the... Uh, I noticed one of the videos featuring it on the internet showed it came as a kit with a USB lead. So that's quite interesting. It's quite a, a neat little arrangement. Oh, the current in normal use is about 50 milliamps um, tops. It doesn't go above about 50 milliamps, I don't think. Um, most of the time it hovers about the sort of 45 milliamp mark. Um, I suppose the beeper probably adds to that, but it's only uh, active for short bursts. So yeah, interesting little thing.